So we are in Paris, one of the best, most famous cities in the world. Actually, I felt that I am living in the era of 200, uh, I mean uh, 1300 or 1400. I've gone back to that era. Uh, it is a city they have very well kept and preserved their history. In this video, we'll be sharing our three-day travel itinerary in Paris. We visited this beautiful city in early September with my parents and our little one. So we'll highlight some family-friendly things to do and see, along with some vegetarian food options we enjoyed. Hello and welcome. We are Sakshi, DJ and Little Pixie. We share our vegetarian food explorations and family travel adventures from London, the UK and around the world. Hoping you'll find your next food or travel inspiration here. Hi folks and thanks for tuning in. Bonjour from Paris. This is our third time in Paris but it's the first time that my mom and dad are visiting and also it's the first time for Pixie. So we are excited to show them around town and this vlog is all about that. So let's go. We kicked off day one with a leisurely walk along the Seine River, taking in the views and stopping at some of the many stalls along the banks to pick up souvenirs. Afterwards, we headed to a museum located in a former railway station, Museum des Ose. The building itself is stunning with intricate details on the walls and ceilings that immediately catch your eye as you enter. Inside, we explored an impressive collection of sculptures and paintings, allowing us to appreciate the art up close. Unlike the Louvre, it's more manageable and can be comfortably explored in one to two hours. A short walk from the museum, we enjoyed a lovely lunch at a charming French bistro. Afterwards, we crossed the river via one of the well-known bridges called Ponzea, taking in the beautiful views and refreshing breeze along the way. The bridge was once famous for love locks, where couples would attach padlocks to the railings and toss the key into the river, though these were removed in 2015 to preserve the bridge's structure. But you can still spot some today. From here, we headed to the iconic Louvre Museum. Since we had already visited another museum earlier and both DJ and I had toured the Louvre before, we chose to admire it from the outside. The Louvre is massive and if you plan to visit, we recommend setting aside at least half a day. Art enthusiasts could easily spend even more time exploring it. After spending some time around the grounds, we boarded a hop-on-hop-off bus tour with Toot Bus. It was a relaxing way to get familiar with Paris and learn about its history, passing by several landmarks. We stopped at a couple to snap some quick photos before getting off at the bus stop nearest to our accommodation and calling it a day. So we are in Paris, one of the best, most famous cities in the world. Our first, my first impression was uh, a little lukewarm because I was expecting Paris to be very modern and you know full of all fashionable people but it was quite the opposite. I think in Europe all uh, cities have that historical background and but today I am finding it much more impressive. You know, actually I felt that I am living in the era of 200, uh, I mean uh, 1300 or 1400. I've gone back to that era. Uh, it is a city they have very well kept and preserved their history. You can uh, see their grandeur and glory of that time. See, from outside you can't make out what Paris is. You will feel that they are all old buildings, you know, there's no modernity. In. But once no. you get into those buildings, ah, it is just beautiful. Yeah, and seeing in pictures is different and actually Seeing it and feeling it is very, very different. We were staying close to the Republic Square in Paris and the area is dotted with several local bistros and restaurants. Our day started with breakfast at a local bistro. 
we chose to sit outdoors in the lovely weather and enjoyed it at a relaxed pace. Later, we stopped by a boulangerie and picked up some fresh croissants and other pastries. A short break later, we made our way to a renowned luxury mall called Galerie Lafayette. The Galerie Lafayette consists of multiple buildings. The main one is known for its iconic glass dome and stunning architecture and offers a wide range of high-end fashion, beauty products and home goods from top brands. In addition to shopping, you can enjoy rooftop views of Paris for free from its terrace. There are two additional buildings nearby, Lafayette Homme, dedicated to men's fashion and Lafayette Maison and Gourmet, which offers gourmet food. It is here that we stop for lunch. After several Western meals, we chose to dine at an Indian restaurant called The Crossing. The food was delicious and naturally very satisfying. After lunch, we headed to the highlight of our trip, a visit to the Eiffel Tower. While admiring the tower from the ground is free, you can pay to access the first, second or top floors. There's the option to take the stairs for a lower cost or ride the lift. We opted for the lift to the second floor and had pre-booked our tickets online. The lift ride itself was quite an experience and the views from the top were truly spectacular, making it well worth the visit. It's a huge structure. We never imagined that Eiffel Tower will be so big. Uh, we have always seen it in pictures, but uh, going up is a different experience altogether. Uh, I think it is worth coming and worth going to the top floor. And we, we had so far seen the Eiffel Tower only in pictures, but its immensity and its size you can only judge on really. It's huge and it's, uh, it's a real marvel actually. You can go up, the lifts are there maintained and the lift can go right to the top. Of course we didn't go up to the top, but it was sufficient to go up to the second level. The views are beautiful, you can see entire Paris from there, it was just great. And uh, we have uh, uh, many things to do there. There is a souvenir shop, there is a cafe. And the restroom is also there, so it's a well-maintained uh, monument. After descending, we stayed until sunset to admire the Eiffel Tower illuminated at night. The tower is lit up with golden lights from dusk until 1 a.m. Additionally, every evening at the start of each hour, the tower features a sparkling light show that lasts for five minutes. This display involves flashing lights that twinkle, adding to the tower's charm and making it a must-see spectacle for visitors. Our day three started with a trip up to the Sacre Coeur or Basilica of the Sacred Heart, a Roman Catholic church located at the highest point in Paris on Montmartre Hill. Given the location, you can enjoy panoramic views of the city for free from up here. The entry to the cathedral is free and inside you can admire its architecture and grand mosaics. Post this, walk down the stairs to explore the charming neighborhood of Montmartre, known for its narrow streets and artistic vibes. Consider shopping at boutique shops and grabbing a bite to soak in its charm. If you're looking for a slightly different experience in Paris, visit the Atelier de Lumière. This is a digital art museum that offers immersive art experiences. It features large-scale projections of famous artworks 
set to music, allowing you to walk through and be surrounded by moving images on the walls, floors and ceilings, creating a mesmerizing blend of art and technology. It's a unique sensory experience that reimagines how art can be viewed and appreciated. Finally, we recommend experiencing Paris at night. Take a stroll through different neighborhoods to soak in the lights, sounds and the hustle and bustle of local bars and restaurants. If possible, grab an outdoor table and enjoy a meal while taking in the lively atmosphere and the city's nighttime charm. Vegetarian options in French food are limited, but we did try a few things along with other cuisines that we'll share in this next section. We tried uh, we are sitting at present uh, at uh, Braise restaurant cafe and uh, we tried galet it is uh, uh, made up of uh, buckwheat and uh, uh, many things are filled in it galet uh, galet was very tasty and i think it is a very good uh, it's a very healthy option so it was filled with all leafy vegetables and tofu and avocado and beetroot and what not and the flavors that they had added some oils and some flavors which were very nice naturally it was unique for us because we are not used to <laughs> french food so this was one of the local foods and uh, we are always uh, apprehensive to try. to try but then it turned out to be pretty tasty Similar to galettes, you can try a crepe, usually made with regular flour batter. We tried a sweet caramel crepe from a street cart while walking around and really liked it. The breakfast experience was unique because here people sit on the street overall the food actually is uh, it's okay but the experience is unique because we don't get such experience in our country the baguette was very hard i was uh, i could not finish them <laughs> so otherwise the experience for experience sake yes you can go and sit in a local cafe just go to the nearest one and the experience is unique for me the best experience in paris was visiting different boulangeries because you get so much of fresh baked uh, food over there like you can get croissants uh, pastries breads especially the freshly baked croissants coming out of the oven and the smell the whole room is filled with like aroma of a uh, freshly baked croissant so it was just amazing and and you should definitely visit uh, some boulangeries during your visit uh, to have some baked uh, goods okay after after visiting uh, many uh, local restaurants and cafes uh, we decide suddenly we we happen to reach to a uh, indian restaurant the crossing uh, and the food the food we enjoy the dal was very tasty uh, we had uh, cauliflower pakoras which was unique we never had such pakoras before and the aloo tikki was also very unique and the total experience was very good we we really enjoyed food after a long long time we are out of our country for say 2 weeks so that was a very good experience and we enjoyed indian food after a long time so during our visit to sacrocor so and we were walking in the street so we found out a very old ice cream place which is more than 80 years old it's called bachir and they had some really unique flavors which uh, was just amazing to try this especially their ice cream the special ice cream with a lot of pistachios on and and cream on top of it was just mouth watering and it was just amazing खड़े हो गए 
बोल ही देती हूँ बोलते हैं ना उसको क्या जगह का नाम 